Hey Jared, Doctor here. Today we're converting a recumbent trike to an electric pedal assist model. I'm converting my trike not because I'm lazy. I am but because I can no longer pedal up even a slight incline due to my progressive neurological condition called SCA3 or spinal cerebellar ataxia 3. Come here you strong muscular man you. <laughs> Sorry, you are too slow. <laughs> But for many attachments, such a project will be out of the classroom, since adding a mid-drive electric motor by a professional will cost up to $1,500 on top of the already expensive trike that you got. But worry not, this is a DIY video that will cost fractions of the amount of money that a more professional builder will cost. Now, generic doctor, I thought that hub motors are cheaper than mid-drive motors, but I use the system based on that platform. While hub motors are cheaper than mid-drive, hub motors will only work on certain models of the companies, while mid-drives will work on all of them. This particular conversion will be done on a catch-like villager, because that's the makeup of the recumbent that I have. Also, the Kajai Villager have a narrow enough dropout to make hub motors in practical. For this build, Audrey of Audrey Reality, Daniel Totally Normal, and Lloyd shall assist me with the conversion process. Because although I am fully able to do the conversion process myself, it would take weeks I do not have. Really. For the major components, I chose a 750 watt buffet mid-drive motor because it is street legal and cheap directly from AliExpress for $403. Note that once purchased, returning it to China will be cost prohibitive. Here is a link to eBay for a slightly more expensive motor that can be returned in the description below along with the rest of the components. The mid-drive motor is powered by a Chinese-made 600 watt hour battery which I purchased off of eBay also. Be sure to get the measurement for your trike first because you might need it to order some extension cable. The first step is to remove the existing crankset. If you don't have a catch trike, the crankset removal process may be different for you with additional tools needed. I will post a link on how to identify which crankset you will be removing and what tools you will need in the description section below. For those who own cat trikes, all you need is a 10mm and an 8mm hex wrench to remove the crankset and the pedals. You will be sacrificing two years in place of the Bafang pedal assist motor. Since I don't own any biking shoes and they are very expensive, I decided to replace the clip on pedals with the normal ones. Next step, we assemble the motor and the primary gear using hex bolts. We then slip the Bavain unit into the crankshaft hole that we left. Remember to tighten other bolts and caps as needed. Just for reference, I have included links to YouTube videos where they have assembled Bavain mid drive motors to similar vehicles. Next step, we assemble the battery tray. Here I chickened out and bought a Utah Trikes custom battery holder for $75 plus $15 shipping. One can definitely cheap out and put a custom rack on the back of your trike and use it as a platform to mount your battery. The cost would dip drastically to a measly $13 for a rack that would fit a 20 inch wheel. After that, we place upon the left steering stick with a non-functioning front derailleur switch, a throttle, and custom stick with screen and navigation buttons. We then need to unscrew the now useless derailleur switch. Eventually, we need to cover up the grip area made empty due to the removal of the brake lever in place of the included computerized brake lever. This should be done with isopropyl alcohol or dish detergent as a lubricant. Trike display mount. This is 
perhaps the proudest part of the build for me. Terra Cycles, a user tried is both famed online and brick and mortar store that offers customized tracks and accessories. Sells a specially 3D printed buffet computer mount for $60. I built one out of bicycle parts for approximately $10. And that was because my Chinese order was delayed courtesy of the coronavirus outbreak there. I had to buy everything on Amazon, which is far more expensive. Run ahead and this will save you lots of money. After soldering the power leads from the motor to the battery sled, in my case with the XT60 connectors, take care to connect the leads correctly. Red to red, black to black. You will damage the batteries if you do it otherwise. Start the triple management process before connecting all the control wire. Don't worry, they are all color coded. Be sure to zip tie the cables to the frame, but not too tightly. Leave enough slack, especially between areas with connectors. I also include links to YouTube videos on how to exactly connect control leads. And after testing everything with a voltmeter and inserting the battery, essentially you are done. Oh, it does move from a stop. I advise you to write with care. Here are some footages of the electric recumbent in action. Next episodes, I shall demonstrate what I did differently to customize my build, including a nifty LED whip, much less than a store ball version, which can cost up to $200. I would like you to go see Dan's channel on electric wheelchairs, where he was instrumental in making this episode possible. And also, I want you to visit Audrey Reality the premier channel for all quirky events in Portland, Oregon, and beyond. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe, like, and comment. And hit that bell icon for notifications on future videos. If you disagree with any of my expressed opinions, then please write to your heart's content in the comment section below.